wither, the flower may fade. But the word of God will last forever. Give me an honor to an awesome God that didn't have to wake us up this morning, but I'm so glad he did. To the deacon staff, to the choir that have sung so beautifully this morning, and all of my father's children here at Morningstar and on the web. We are so glad to see all of you. Glad to have our visitors with us. And even though my wife say I stole this saying, I just borrowed it for a while, is that your visitors one time. Next time you come, you'll be our friend. Friends come to see about you. Sometimes this is just going to be nosy. Amen. But we're so glad to have you with us. Amen. And we would like for you to share with us in the word of God. Turn with us, please, to 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Usher, you may be seated. They're looking good on their posts. And the good thing about it is all young men, look at that. Amen. Train up a child in the way it should go when they get old. You didn't say they weren't going to go nowhere, but when they get old, they won't depart. Amen. Amen. First John, chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Now, we'll be coming from the King James Version of God's Holy Writing. If you have another translation that is quite all right, we're going to wind up on the same road because it is still the Word of God. Right. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. Now, say, wait a minute. Amen. And it reads like this. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation of our sin. And not for our sin, ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, and him verily is the love of God perfect. Hereby, knowing we that we are in him, he that saith he abides in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brothering, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye have from the beginning. The old commandment is that the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new covenant, a new commandment I write unto you, which things is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the truth and the true light now shineth. He that says he is in the light and habit and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none no occasionally to stumble in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. May God have a blessing to the reading of his holy and enriched word. Right. Let's talk with you briefly. With the aid of the Holy Spirit, 
from the fault, practice what you preach. Practice what you preach. The words of our text doesn't suggest that we should apply this test to others and sit in judgment of them. Instead, the apostle of love suggests that we examine our own hearts and sit in judgment of our own profession of faith. He's giving us a checklist this morning by which we may test the genuineness of our relationship with God. John this morning is warning us against the perils of self-deception. Yeah, he wants to save us from the disappointment of spending eternity away from God because we put our faith in a profession which doesn't produce practice. Yes, this, uh, this world, this unbelieving world has no confidence in a, in a religion that does not practice what we preach. Yes, uh, sermons that walk in shoes. Yes, and express action are far more convincing than the articulation of words. Yeah, people rather see a sermon than to hear one any day. Yeah, they rather be taught a lesson by observing what we do. Yes, my brothers and sisters, they may not understand the advice that we give, but they will not misunderstand our actions or how we live. Yes, and if we would have two thoughts this morning, there's, there's two that I want you to jot down here today. Yeah, we have a profession and a practice of faith. Right. Yes, a, a profession of faith is essential. Yes, by the profession of faith, we identify ourselves with Jesus the Christ. Right. Yes, we separate ourselves from the world. Mm. We take a stand with God. Right. And we declare our intentions to do the will of God. Yes, we have a clear choice here this morning. For Matthew 10 and verse 36 tells us that even one who acknowledges Christ, uh, will, will, uh, will we acknowledge Christ and not ashamed? Yeah, then Christ will acknowledge us before his Father in heaven. Yeah, but Matthew chapter 7 verses, 20, verses 21 through 23 also tells us that Jesus exposes those who sound religious but have no personal relationship with him. Yeah, many people think that if they are good people, yeah, and they sound and say religious things, they will be rewarded with eternal life. Right. But in reality, our faith in Christ is what will count in the day of judgment. Right. Yes, what we do for Christ will only last. Right. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you give me your hand and join the church, which I would like for you to do that. Amen. It doesn't matter if you are baptized in the pool back here. That's not going to get you into heaven. But what will get you into heaven is that you must be, you got to be born again. Well, maybe some of you are like Nicodemus and, and, and wondering how can you be born when you're old? Can you enter into your mother's womb a second time? That ain't a natural birth. That ain't what I'm talking about. Amen. But what I'm talking about is that you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. Nothing. You can't pay your way. You can't be good enough. Matter of fact, you can't be good enough. If that were the case, we all would fix ourselves up. Right. 
Amen. But we must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I like how the songwriter said, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, then, it's the practice of our profession. Yeah, John encourages us uh, to take place in our faith of our profession, and it is expressed in two ways. First, by keeping the commandments of God. Yes, in this epistle, a great emphasis is placed upon the significance of keeping uh, the deep inward desire of obeying the commandments of God. John instead uh, insists that, that we can test the genuineness of, of our profession of faith by a deep loving relationship with God. Yes, 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 yes. There never been a time in our history when there are more God talk than ever before. Everybody is saying God told me to tell you this and told me to tell you that. But if God was speaking as much as people say he is, God would have laryngitis. Yes, God is not scared of you. Yeah, he knows where you live. He knows how many hairs on your head. Matter of fact, he made you, and he knows all about you. And so if he got anything to tell you, he knows right where you live. Yeah, 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 but it's popular today to believe in God. For 90% of all Americans say they believe in God. Just as long as they don't have to change their way of life. Yeah, yeah, it's a kind of bargain-based relationship. Yeah, yeah, you believe in God. You believe in Jesus the Christ. But you keep, but you can keep on doing what you want to do. You can live any kind of way. Yeah, you can act any kind of way and come in and think that you're going to make it into heaven. Yeah, but can I bust your bubble this morning? That it, this ain't Burger King. You can't have it your way. Yeah, you can't come in hungry and leave happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't live your kind of life and think that you can only be a Christian on Wednesday night and Sunday morning. A lot of folks think that Oh, God loves me. But they don't read the rest of the Bible. They take out bits and pieces of God's word and use it like a buffet line. Yes, uh, our gay and lesbian sisters and brothers, they, they say that God loves them, and true enough, God does love them. Amen, but he does not condone in your mess. Yeah, yeah, he loves you, but he doesn't love your way. If you don't believe me, you ask those people there, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh -huh. Yeah, they lived any kind of way. Yeah, they did any kind of thing that they thought they were big and bad enough to do. But oh, in the end result, they were wiped off the face of the earth. Uh -huh. And there is no trace where they became or where they've gone. God has given you opportunity. To get it right with him. It's bad to say. That every waking moment. Seems like every 10 minutes of the day. Somebody talking about Caitlyn Jenner. He's still Bruce. Hey Amen. One of the ugliest women I ever seen. Hey Amen. You can quote me on that one. Hey Amen. But just because they put you on vanity fat. Just because they dress you up in the finest dress. Just because they got the best makeup artist and, and hairstylist to fix you up does not still make you a woman. Yeah, if God made you a man, that's exactly what he wanted you to be. If God made you a woman, that's exactly who he wanted you to be. 
It's like you put a, a slap in God's face by telling him he didn't know what he was doing. I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. That's a bunch of, hmm. Oh, don't y'all look at me like that. Amen. A lot of us are standing up here and we'll talk about it until it hits our house. When it hits our house, we want to change our views. But I want to let you know one thing, and I don't want to talk about my house. Amen. That, hey, I got three boys. Amen. And they better be boys until the day I die. Amen. They better not come up in there talking about they changing their name. They a woman trapped in a man's body. <laughs> oh, I'm going to lay some more than holy oil on them. Amen. But in our world today, we've got to believe that we cannot live any kind of way and think we're going to heaven. You cannot compromise with the world and think you're still going to heaven. There are preachers that are on the cover of magazines and saying, this is my husband. Down in Florida, they got one inviting you to church, uh, and it's two women. Yeah, you can't live any kind of way. If God says it's wrong, it's still wrong. I don't care how many laws they pass, how many politicians tell you it's right, how many folks say, because it's in my family, it's going to be okay. No, it's not okay. If God says it's wrong, you better believe it's wrong. If brothers and sisters that have television ministries, if the smiling preacher Joe Osteen would preach about the wrong that America is doing, his congregation would dwindle. The church that he has would be closed. His television ministry would be shut down that day. If T.D. Jakes would talk about the wrong lifestyle of people, yeah, he wouldn't be on television. His part of how would become an outhouse. Yes, if men and women that preach the gospel of Jesus Christ stand on the word, they will be hated for Jesus' name. If you stand on the word of God, Guess what? Today, because we don't accept same-sex marriage, we don't accept those who got outside marital affairs, we don't accept those who lie and steal and cheat, we're public enemy, number one. Yeah, there's going to come a time, because we stand up for right, they're going to lock us up. Amen. They're locking us up now in, with words. Folks that stand up, losing their job. Losing their houses. Losing their livelihood. But let me tell you, I'm going to practice what I preach. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I'm in the White House or back door. Yeah, I'm still going to tell the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. I cannot fear those who are looking at me. But oh, I feel a man that can destroy me body and soul. I'm held accountable for telling you the truth. Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Woe unto me if I see the enemy coming and does not sound the alarm. Woe unto me if I don't tell you the truth, but I let you hold on to your life. Today, I can't compromise with your soul. Yeah, 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 I want you to know here today for Psalm, for Proverbs 4, for, excuse me, Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yes, doing, I don't want you to be enticed with taking the shortcuts of life. 
Yeah, they may seem right to you. They may look right. Folk may even pat you on the back. Uh, but, oh, what would it do with a prophet, a man, a woman, to gain the whole world and die and lose your soul? We should get more thought and prayer for concern to the commandments of God. These aren't biased rules that are made by a mood swinging God. Yes, we who ignore, violate, or transgress the commandments of God does this on our own to, that leads unto destruction. Yes, the Greek thought that they could bribe their gods by doing favors for man. But I want you to know here this morning our definition of perpetuation in our text uh, is that God himself presents himself in Jesus Christ which will turn away his rightful wrath against our sin. Yes, sir, God presented himself. I don't have enough money. You don't have enough money. We, we can pay our way out. We can't do enough deeds. What it look like me? Trying to give God something he already owned. Trying to bribe him with something he already got. For me to make it into heaven. But I want to let you know here that if we give our life over to him. Oh, he'll make. He's our adversary. He'll beat our adversary, excuse me. Amen. But he's our advocate that leans and talks to God on our behalf. Oh, man, what an awesome lawyer we have in Jesus the Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this was uh, not just for us, though. It's not just for our sin, but for the sins of the whole world. Because sin need not to be a barrier between God and us. But this barricade was destroyed by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Well, yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, we have a, a genuine advocate in heaven that gives us an open invitation to restoration through confession. Right. Yes, God changes our hearts uh, and writes his laws upon our hearts. Yeah, according to Psalm 119 and 11. Yes, he says, hide God's word in our heart. Yes, is a, is a determination that we shouldn't sin. Yes, but memorizing alone will not keep us from sinning. Yeah, we must put the word of God to work in our lives. And make it a guide in everything that we do. Yes, yeah, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And everything else will be added unto you. Yeah, you don't have to lie, cheat, and scheme. You don't have to cut folks' throats, stab them in the back to get ahead. Did I know this is dog eat dog world. But oh, you ain't got to do those things to get ahead. All you got to do is trust in God. Practice what you preach. Yes, the commandments. It's a love of All right. This is both an old and new commandment. Well, well. Yes, uh, it's old because Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18 says, Thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, it's a new covenant because Jesus has interpreted it in a new radical way. In John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Yeah, he says, a new commandment uh, I give unto you, that you love uh, ye one another, as I have also loved you that ye also love one another. Yeah, by this uh, shall all men know 
that ye are my disciples. If you love ye one another. Love isn't only an expression of self-sacrifice or servanthood. It's a defining moment in our life uh, where we are selfless giving each other uh, the love of God. Yeah, we reach it beyond friendship. Yes, and draw enemies and those who persecute us. Love uh, should be that unifying force. Yes, and that identifying mark. Yeah, that all Christians know uh, and have the love of God. The love is uh, uh, the key that we are walking in the light. Uh, yeah, because uh, we can't grow in spirituality if we are hating one another. We can't grow uh, to the full potential of maturity in Christ uh, if we're turning our nose up uh, at one another. We can't grow uh, when we got our head looking the other way and look like we're sucking on lemons. Uh, well, we can't grow uh, if we don't have the love of Jesus Christ in our life. Uh, we can't cut on this love uh, like a light switch. Uh, oh, but this love uh, got to abide in us uh, as we abide in it. Uh, I'm talking about to tell you here this morning that in verses 7 through, uh, through verses 9 through 11, John Word focuses on the attitude that causes us to ignore others. Yeah, the attitude that, treat, that we treat others as though they are annoyances, as though they are rivals, as though they are enemies. I want to let you know that we ought to, we are, it's not that we are going to dislike others. Oh, we all are not the same. There are some things that you do different than I do. Hey, but I want to let you know that it's your attitude that's going to get you in trouble. It's your attitude that God is going to judge. Yeah, Christian love isn't a feeling, but it's a choice. Yeah, we choose uh, uh, to be concerned for the well-being of others, uh, even though we might not feel that way of affection toward them. But because of God's love, we'll go to the edges Oh, and the highways to compel men and women to come to God. We are going to the ends of the earth uh, uh, to take care of our brothers and sister need. Is there anybody in here today that realize that if you choose to love others, God will make it available that his love will express through you. Is there anybody in this place that's tired of looking at you, yourself, and I? But then you start thinking about the others that are going through worse than what you are going through. Is there anybody in this place uh, that realize that you are your brother's keeper? Is there anybody in this place uh, that realize that if you do for others, you will be blessed? I want to let you know here this morning. I know some of you say, I love you. I forgive you, but I ain't going to forget. But I ask God to move that spirit out of you. Because if you don't forgive, you're the one in bondage. They're going around sleeping, having a good time, doing what they want to do. But your attitude changes when you think about it. Your, your facial expression change when you see them walking down the street. Yeah, when you even think about them, your whole attitude begin to change, and they're nowhere around. But oh, if we practice what we preach, then men and women will see God in us, uh, and they'll draw them from the world to the church. It's time for us to stop playing church while we in church. I guarantee you, I don't want to be going to hell second class. Oh, right. uh, you know the world, they're going to be real with theirs. Mm. What them young folks say, they're going to keep it 100. Mm -hmm. If they if they smoking, they're going to pass puff puff giving. Oh, y'all, don't y'all look at me. Some of y'all puff puff giving now. Okay. Amen. If, you, if they're drinking, they'll drink out the same bottle. 
Man, they'll share everything they got. They're going to be real with them. But some of us are sitting in this church. Yes, talking about I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And you cussing folk out. You won't even give folks. Some, some of you are telling I won't even spit on you if you was on fire. Some of you sitting here Sunday after Sunday, listen to sermon after sermon, and you turn around and you come in here the same way and leave the same way. Some of you are in here holding on to grudges right now. And you don't even know why you hate the person. Some of you got attitudes. Folks speak to you, you got to snap them up. God going to hold you accountable. I ain't responsible for how you treat me. But I guarantee you I'm 100% responsible for how I treat you. You ain't got to love me. But I got to love you. But if you want to make it to heaven, if you're practicing what you preach, you're going to try to live by this word of God. You're going to stand on the word. So when they lay you across here, nobody have to get up here and lie on you. There's more lying go on in the church doing a funeral than anything. You know they didn't like you. We were the best of friends. We were, uh, 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 I, I love that person. You lying and they lying too. We need to be 100% God sees us. We can dress up all we want, but God sees our heart. And on that great getting up morning when you stand before God, ain't nobody else going to be there but you and God. And what you do is going to testify for you or against you. If you are stumbling block in somebody's way, you need to move out the way and get it right. A lot of us are dressed up, portraying that we are holier than thou. But our life outside that door does not match up with what God said. Today, I, 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 don't get me wrong, all of us have sinned, yes, come short of God's glory standard. But the difference is, is that we don't deliberately sin. Mm, that is a sin of omission, sin of commission. Those sins that we willfully do, that we know got consequences, but we do them anyway. But then there is, there is a sin that we offend our brother and we don't know it. Our brothers and our sisters. And we have to pray then that Lord help me to walk in a way that won't hurt my brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Today, my brother and sister, we ought to practice what we preach. If we see somebody in need, let us fulfill that need. Amen. If they're down, let's lift them, let's lift them up. You ain't got to pour no water on a drowning person. Amen. But if you're looking down on somebody, don't look down your nose at them alone unless you dare to help them up. Today I challenge you here this morning to practice what you preach. If you're standing on the word of God, stand there. But you ain't got to listen to my sermon. Watch me walk. That's the choir singing.